Namaste. Welcome to this meditation course with me, Ellie Latrobe. Through these five stages of this course, I hope that you are able to develop a connection with your soul, a means of communicating and receiving those intuitions and innate knowingnesses of that soul whose consciousness is you. And everyone's soul is unique. So everyone's urge and experience and desire to express is unique. Just as your body is unique, as your physicality is created from your DNA and the environment that you've grown up in, so too your emotions have been shaped from your family and from the society around you and your education. And your brain has been shaped by all that you've taken in and you've learned and you've understood and all the means of learning that you've developed through your lifetime as it is to this point. But your soul all the time has been there. This place within you that is your pure consciousness. And in that place of pure consciousness, there is this desire for um, this lifetime to be um, filled with joy through spontaneous expression of this soul, of this consciousness. And that joy is experienced through, um, through finding our place in the world, through knowing that what we are doing is filling our cup, it's, um, it's a feedback system to our soul whose urge is being expressed and this learning from the experience in our lifetime as we grow together as this soul and body or personality through our lifetime. So the thing is through our life we develop these places that we get blocked. We hold on to emotions, we're either stuck or we feel emotions um, so intensely and immediately that they um, distract us from the more subtle emotional guidance system of, of our soul or even when we feel it in our body. When we are um, uncomfortable in our body, we can't feel the gut instinct or the body intuitive knowingness of what it wants to eat or how it wants to move or what will um, enable this body to feel more alive. And equally, what we're doing in our, in our mind, in our rational mind, are we... Um, are we avoiding, are we going into um, books and stories and Netflix as a means of distracting? In our work, are we getting caught in feedback loops of wanting to be approved, wanting to climb ladders? And we stop listening to this um, higher point of consciousness, which is our own unique soul. And of course, there are so many different philosophies and the word soul is, chucked around in to mean a lot of different things. But from this um, creative meditation, we are thinking of ourselves as a personality which evolves and changes, which has its roots in its physical form, but it also has this frequency, it also has this life. And in addition to this life and this physical form, there is this um, consciousness that is innately created when you have a vibration and when you have a form. This is the, um, the triad the, uh, that is represented within spiritual um, concepts and religious concepts and our soul is the middle principle. Our soul is our, um, our voice of conscience. And as we grow older, this voice, it, it's wanting to be heard more and more. But sometimes because we're not listening, external events happen. We are confronted with challenging events which, which arise uh, emotions within us or thought patterns and thought cycles that become um, so challenging that we have to stop. We may end relationships, we may end jobs, we may just be in a really sticky place in our life. And all of these are signposts. 
And as we deepen our connection with our soul, we develop the ability to see the signposts that are meant for us, the synchronicities in our life, and the, the paths that we need to walk. And because we are all unique, the way that we create that connection with our soul is unique. So we need to develop a meditation practice that takes into account um, our uniqueness. In this course, we are gonna be building upon the tools of breathing, of concentration, visualization, and awareness. And then the fifth stage, we will um, learn about the basic principles of developing our own aligning creative meditation. So in these four stages, um, in each stage we're going to be um, observing, journaling, learning about ourselves, about what distracts us, about what's in the way between our soul communicating with us, and then about how our soul is communicating with us. And we're going to look into our physical body, into our emotional body, into our thoughts, to try and understand what we need. And then through the concentration and visualization practice, we're going to be sharpening our mind as an instrument in order to be able to um, focus on one point. We don't get rid of all the other stuff. We don't reject any part of ourselves, but we focus upon what we are trying to create or what we are trying to um, do or trying to be. And in that place of concentration, we develop our capacity to visualize. And visualization taps us into our abstract mind, which is part of our soul. So the main operation that we're working through on these four, uh, five stages will be, yes, sharpening our mind, developing the capacity for our rational brain to focus, but also the abstract mind to become more alive and, and we become more sensitive to the more abstract impressions that we can receive, whether it's visuals, whether it's feelings, whether it's sounds, and we're all different, so we're learning to understand where in the abstract do we sense our soul and receive those intuitions. Our awareness development, we are deepening that capacity to know what our body is telling us through the soul. Again, not rejecting, because this instrument is intrinsically trying to work with our soul. The two are trying to work hand in hand. We are not trying to just be a soul or just be spirit and light. We are trying very much to be working in our everyday lives, listening, attuned to those signs, to the voice of conscience, to our consciousness itself, which is our soul. So the final stage, we will then um, break down the creative meditation process and understand and examine how you can develop this practice um, on an ongoing basis following the completion of the course. You can also complete this course in a number of different ways. You can do it um, each stage for a fixed number of days or for a week. So you could do the first stage, two days, and so on, second stage, two days. You could pick a week, a week, a week, or you could do it one day, one day, one day, one day, finishing it in five days as a mean to kind of supercharge and reactivate you into the meditative space again, particularly for those of you who have a meditation practice, but maybe it's slipped um, recently and you want to get back into it. Equally, if you wanna dive really deep into this, um, you can do it for a month each stage. There's nothing stopping you for having a longer, more deep understanding of each of the stages. I hope that each one brings you a new understanding and a glimmer of truth about who you are, why you're here, what brings you joy, what needs to happen in your life, 
what the what places do change need to happen and what places do we just need to love accompanying this um, course will be a meditation journal and obviously if you are doing it for a longer period of time you will need an additional journal to go with it so that you have enough space for all of your notes if it's just a one day two day practice you will be okay just probably with the journal itself so i hope that this journey is insightful uh, do connect with me, ask any questions, and let me know how you're doing, um, and let the journey begin. Namaste and welcome to stage one of this meditation course with me, Ellie Latrobe. So the first stage we are going to be understanding ourselves in terms of our soul and our personality and understanding what our mind is. All these terms I'm going to be using frequently so it's really important that we kind of get a better grasp of what that means because quite often words are the things that separate, um, separate us from understanding each other's truth. We get wound up in the words. So through the meditation we're going to try and experience what our personality is, what our soul is, what our mind is and in that we are going to try and observe, just observe what's distracting us, what's taking us away from this clear channel to this higher place of um, who we are, our soul, uh, what's distracting us from feeling um, our emotional guidance system, what's stopping us from feeling in our gut what is right for us to do or wrong for us to do. So, when we think about the personality, we're talking about, um, firstly, the three planes of our existence, of our physical, of our emotional, and of our mental. So let's take each one in turn. Our physical body is what most of us focus on for the whole of our life. We observe it in the mirror, we judge it, um, we, um, you know, <laughs> we clothe it, we mind it, we wash it. And it's our point of where we need nourishment, we need to, to love and engage with this part of ourselves. Equally, we need to recognize that this physical body only is like this because of our theric body. The physical body is like the, it's like the funnel down to the physical body. From all the higher planes of consciousness it comes down to our physical body. So everything that we've got going on up here, up here in our mind, and then down into our emotions, comes down like a funnel through our etheric body and creates this physical body. So quite often when we go to work on ourselves or healing, we have to look at the emotional basis of dis-ease in our body. We have to look at our repetitive habits from our repetitive thought cycles that are creating such habits in the world to break these cycles of destructive behavior that are creating the dis-ease in our body. Um, so the physical body obviously has, we as a physical form, we have these two arms, we have two legs, we have these limbs, we have a spinal column, we have all these organs. <laughs> Sorry, it's not going to be a biology lesson. But this is, this is a product of everything that you are. And actually, we could get really deep by analysing the symbols within our body. 
you know, like we are going to, in the fourth stage, we're going to be thinking about chakras. And chakras are how the etheric system communicates through all planes of our existence and creates this physical body in these seven main places. There are other smaller chakras, but we're not going to deal with that right now. So our physical body has five senses which enable us to interpret the physical world. Okay, so this is the ability of our organs to our brain, which are all physical things, to able to interpret the sensations and feelings of living in life. We also have hormones which create feelings. <laughs> Um, adrenaline makes us, you know, this is when we get frightened or fight or flight, you know, it makes us want to fight or run away, you know, it's an innate kind of biology within us. But then when we look to, uh, sorry, and then we have our, our, our thoughts, our nervous system, which are like fire, right, you know, and the brain and all the nervous system through the body like electricity, it's like mini fires, okay? So we have physical body, which is like our earth. We have our, um, we have our hormones, which connect us from our physical to our emotional body, which is like water. They're the things that should be flowing. That's why they're called emotions, energy in motion. Um, and often we don't let these emotions flow because of you know, society mostly, and <laughs> most people have been told as a kid, you know, not to tantrum, it's not nice, no one likes it, you know, no one's going to love you if you tantrum or emotion, get, be emotional on anyone. Things are changing now, so we can start to look at those points of, of our inner tantruming child and be friends with them. To actually, if we let this block, these blocks of emotion start to move, our emotional system can function as it's meant to. It is our guidance system. Our soul is also trying to communicate through our, our emotions. So by um, moving on some of the old emotions, we become sensitive to the emotions of the here and now. And that's when we can take our soul consciousness, our connection with our soul into our daily life. So then we have our, our, our mental body, which is, is like fire. It's that the connected to the, the, um, the physical body through the nervous system, through the brain. Fire, it's quick, you know? Lightning fast, thoughts, right? And these thought patterns, the way that we think, our fixed belief systems, the, um, uh, you know, learnt mental patterns as well from our family, um, and quite often connected to emotions a lot of the time. There's this emotional thought cycle that can link us in these um, whirlpools of self-destruction, or at least repeating the same pattern and the same cycle over and over and over again. So, what do we, <laughs> what do we learn from our thoughts? Well, the thoughts aren't going to go away. The thoughts don't just evaporate through meditation. We simply learn to observe them. We become familiar with our thought patterns. We label them. We understand that they're there, whether it's a belief system or a thought cycle that we get trapped in from time to time. Um, and we start to label them down. If we put it from our mind down onto pencil, paper, pen, you can use crayons too, it gets it out into the physical and it's there in concrete saying, you have this, whatever this thing is, this mental pattern, this belief system, note it when it happens in your life, yeah? Note it. How, and then maybe through some of the practices that we're gonna be developing over the next couple of stages, you can create some space around that. And then the response can become conscious as opposed to an impulsive reaction, which you just don't know where it's coming from. 
Not to say that all impulses are um, personality led, but quite often they are, particularly when there's a build up and a density of these emotions and thoughts and the cycles that we create inside of ourselves. So we have these three layers, which yes, have um, a connection to each other, to the emotional body, to the mental body, to the physical body, and to each other. And this connects us to the lower part of our mind. So the mind has two parts. It has a lower, concrete, rational uh, mind, which thinks about things. And it is, um, it is evolved in the sense that it's not just following beliefs. It's not just um, zombie-like or robot-like in following anything that anyone gives you. The rational brain, when it's sharpened, is questioning, is thinking, is saying to each point that comes to present itself, is this true? I will evaluate it. I will understand it. I will read about it. I will take courses on it. I will learn things. And I will bring new points of information into my brain so that I can rationally understand what is true. I can learn new skills. I can develop um, techniques that I'm trying to develop. And this is an essential part of connecting to the second part of our mind, which is the abstract. And the abstract mind is the part where the soul is trying to communicate through abstract impressions. So it's like a code, you know, our soul somehow wants to communicate with us, but it doesn't speak whatever language we are speaking. It speaks its own um, abstract symbolic language, that we have to develop our ability to interpret. And we do that through um, sharpening our ability to concentrate, freeing ourselves from the density of thoughts that can cloud that rational mind, so that these impressions can just be received in their rawness, and naturally un, un, unraveled and in create and, and in and then that an idea is created so it's a means of receiving ideas and this is what the mind is and for most of us there are points when our abstract mind and our rational mind are working together but quite often there's this little there's this little gap and there's there's disharmony, <clears throat> we're not in rapport, we're just in the thoughts and that's blocking us from receiving these more subtler abstract impressions. So the mind is both from our personality and our soul and as we deepen that rapport, that means of communication, the mind kind of integrates for a lot longer periods of time and eventually the mind is in synthesis with the body. And so we can go about our daily, daily, um, daily business in more often than not with that um, uh, communication, with that uh, voice of conscience um, leading, leading the way and helping us um, in our decisions that we have to take every day and how we respond to things that happen. So the soul itself is, yes, it's a higher mind, but it also lives, expands into um, two other planes of consciousness, into uh, the causal and the buddhaic. And the causal body of the soul is what, in every lifetime, the soul kind of withdraws from a, a personality and returns to its causal body, in which it moves on to another lifetime, another lifetime, another lifetime. And so it takes with it all of the experience that we have learned along the way into each lifetime. And yet we don't have to remember the story of the lifetime, it's the innate gifts 
that it brings. You know, like some people just have uh, a leadership in them. Some people just are healers, probably because they've been healing for centuries. <laughs> um, some people are just manifestors, are just able to make things happen. And it may not have just happened in this lifetime. This lifetime might be in the tipping point, bringing everything from where it's been into um, the, the one particular lifetime where there was a particular significance. But this soul's journey is, um, is important, as, as is this lifetime is important, as is your life. Um, so your soul has this um, this quality that comes with it. It yes, it has karma and dharma. So it has the stuff that has to unravel, but it also has this purpose, and it's your purpose. It's not anyone else's purpose, and it's definitely not for any big establishments or organisations to tell you what your purpose is. Only you and your soul know that. Um, so the soul, uh, the only one point to talk about the soul really now is to say that the soul is kind of the vehicle for receiving the higher spiritual impulse or light or life itself because that's so intangible for our rational minds to understand that the soul interprets it in its uniqueness in to its frequency, to its magnetism, to the way that it can color it into an impression that can be received by the rational mind and then into the physical body to it as an idea to be, be actioned in thoughts, in words and in deeds. So I hope through the following meditation you get some um, awareness of um, where in your body you feel those um, blocks, uh, where um, which is distracting you, what you're learning in those areas and also what your soul feels like. You know, I hope that you get a glimmer of that. So however long you're taking each stage, um, you know, be flexible as well. If you need to hang on this meditation for an extra couple of days, then do so. Listen to what you need. Okay, let's go. Namaste. Stage one meditation. So today we are doing our soul personality meditation. So just closing your eyes, sitting yourself up nice and tall, drawing those shoulders back. Take a big inhale and exhale through your mouth. Drop your chin to your chest and just see how the spine feels. Inhale, chin rising. Exhale, chin to chest. Inhale, chin lifts. Exhale, chin falls. How does that spine feel? And then roll the shoulders. <clears throat> Have your palms turned down on your thighs. If you're sat in a chair, the soles of the feet on the ground. If you're cross-legged or kneeling, just make sure you have enough props and feel comfortable. Then we're just gonna take a few circles with our spine seeing how our lower spine feels. And then rounding the spine and lifting the chest. And 
How does the whole of your spine feel? And then sitting up nice and tall, just closing your eyes. And we're gonna do a body scan in this meditation this morning. So just breathing smoothly through the nose. The eyes are gently shut. Your gaze is inwards as your spine is tall. Shoulders are drawn back, core is lightly engaged and chin is gently drawing in to allow that crown to lift up as high as it needs to lift. Allow your face to soften and bring your awareness down to your toes and the soles of your feet. How do the soles of your feet feel? And then to your ankles, bringing your body scan to your ankles and seeing how your ankles feel. And to your shins and your calves, how do they feel? In your knees, in your thighs. And to your hips and your pelvis. How do those hips Feel. Breathing softly in your belly. How does your belly feel? How do the organs inside your body feel? What do they need? How's the side of your body? How's your lower spine and your sacrum? How do your kidneys feel? And up through the organs, up through your body to your diaphragm. How does your diaphragm and your ribs feel? And the lungs within? Take a big couple of breaths and see how your lungs feel and your chest. What is holding here? What is restricting here? And to your heart. How does your heart feel? And your shoulders and your arms. How do they feel? Are they tense? Can you relax them? How is the, 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 the forearms and the wrists? Maybe you need to lightly move them. How do the palms of your hands feel as you turn them up to the sky? How do your fingers feel and your thumb? What do they need? And 
And then to your throat, how does your throat feel? Maybe swallow, see how that makes you feel. How's your tongue and your jaw? Can you bring your tongue to the roof of your mouth? Can you feel into your face? How does your face feel? Are you clenching? Are you tensing? How do your ears feel and your eyes? And into the brain, how does your brain feel? And your scalp of your head and the crown. And then down your spine, how does that spine feel? And up the spine. And down the spine. And up the spine. And down the spine. And up the spine. Bring a little bit of movement into your body, just a little subtle circling of your body. What emotions are you feeling? And where are you feeling them? If you can't feel emotions, maybe See if you can let your body draw you to a part of it. And in that part, see if you can feel what it's feeling. What is the emotion? Breathe into that place. Bring your awareness into that place where the emotion is right now. And ask it what it needs. Why is it there? What does it need? And does it have something to offer you? We're not here to obliterate emotions, we are here to observe. We are here to be curious and investigate why these feelings are here. And then to our thoughts. What are you thinking about? Why do your thoughts keep going? Are they thoughts that you can deal with practical matters later? Or are they thoughts that need to be noted and observed? and understood as to why they're there. Why are you thinking about that, whether it's past or future, or a belief statement about yourself or others? Why is that thought there? And then taking your gaze above your head, See if you can find a point above your head where you can kind of feel like um, that your awareness goes to, that you're drawn to. And to that place, feel what it feels like. What does it look like? Can you allow that energy or light or however it feels to pour down into your mind and through your body? Can you observe any colours, any sensations, any feeling? Can you let it permeate every atom in your body? Breathe into it. How does your soul feel? And 
into your soul, maybe you have a question. Maybe you do need guidance. Maybe you want to understand what those sensations were in your body. Bring them, elevate them up to ask your soul what they mean. Your intuition. Taking a big breath and exhaling. Is there anything else you need to ask? And if you're meditating at the start of your day, we're going to take this sensation, this intuitive feeling, if you like, this awareness of our thoughts, of our emotions, of our body, that feeling of our soul. And we're going to be conscious of being aware of that as we go through our day. So you're setting an intention from this point forth. When you feel yourself contracting, when you feel yourself stress, getting stressed. To scan the body, to observe where the tension is, to understand why it's there. And maybe to go home and write about it later. Setting that intention. Taking a big inhale and exhale. Coming back to your body. And just seeing if you're drawn to any part of your body. Which part of your body is wanting your attention. And take your hands and rub them together. Make them warm. And then place your hands in whatever place it is that needs your attention. Maybe it's two, then put one hand on each. And if it's one, two hands on the one place. And feel the vibrations of your palms to that place. Knowing yourself to be light, knowing yourself to be love, knowing yourself to have your own free will. Back to your spine, breathing up the spine and down the spine, up the spine and down the spine. Taking a few deep breaths, palms back onto your knees, chin to chest. And inhale, chin rises. I'm going to sound OM to seal the practice. You can simply listen or join. Inhale and exhale. And inhale for OM. Namaste.